Everybody hold up your Bible. Say, say this after me. I thank you, Father, that the Word has the power to change my life. Today I give heed to it. I allow it to go into my ears, then into my mind, and then into my spirit. I'm a hearer of the Word and a doer of the Word. And I'll never be the same after today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I like vacations. I like being on vacation. I like the woods. I like the mountains. I like the beach. I just like being on vacation anywhere. How many, how many of you feel like, you know, just to be out of town, it's a good day? It's a good week if I'm somewhere else. You know, just, just like being out and being away. And vacations, listen, vacations are necessary. It's important that you spend that time off. I know some people that I don't, I don't know what's in their brain, but they pride themselves in not taking a vacation. Listen, you need to take, you got time off from work, you need to take that vacation time. If, it's, if you got a couple weeks, take a couple weeks vacation. Well, but we don't have much money. Listen, get creative. Well, but you know, uh, get, you know, you can... There, there are a lot of things that try to limit our vacation time. There are, you know, sometimes, any of you ever go on vacation and the boss harasses you when you're on vacation? No, you don't have that job. Good for you. Good. You know, because I have been on that job where, you know, I may as well stay here. Because they're going to want me to work. And, and I'm not talking about the occasional call from time to time you're on vacation. And, and the responsibility that you have at work is important. So you're going to get a call or two during a week's vacation. I understand that. But, but, you know, you need to have a talk with your boss if you're getting a call every day, every two days. And if you are the boss, <laughs> if you are the boss, then train your team and empower them to make decisions. Don't have them calling you every, every two hours. What do we do about this? What do we do about that? What do we do about the other? Empower, train and empower your team and set up things in, on, uh, at your workplace to be systemic so you can go away and they can make decisions on your behalf. Don't be so insecure that you've got to be needed every moment of the play, at the place where you work or at your business. Amen. That was great. You know, be creative for, for some people just getting started or whatever, you know, finances are tight. You can still take a vacation. I know uh, when, when our kids were small, m uh, money wasn't available for us to take our kids to Disney World and that kind of thing. Other people were doing that. And one of the things that we did was take our kids camping. We'd go for a whole week and set up camp and we'd go camping. And our kids tell us to this day that some of the best childhood memories that they have is when we went camping together as a family. Didn't cost very much, but, uh, and there are a lot of things you can do. You can get creative. Listen, if you're gonna take a staycation, anybody, everybody know what a staycation is? It's a cation where you stay home. If you're going to take a staycation, that's fine, but you need to plan things that are like a vacation, especially for your kids or even for your wife. Don't take a staycation and stay home and work the whole week. You need to, you need to even if it's a staycation, there are things you can do within 50 miles of Raleigh that are a lot of fun. So get up in the morning, go. Come If you're going to sleep at home at night, that's fine. The next morning, but have it planned out like a vacation. You need that time to recharge your physical and emotional uh, batteries. So vacations are good. I don't want anybody to think that what I'm saying today is that you shouldn't take a vacation or that vacations are not good. And vacations meet a need in our life to be able to see something else, look at something else, get our head around something else and get away from uh, the routine of what we have to deal with when we're at home and we're having a regular work week. That being said, there's a difference between spiritual and physical fatigue. There's a difference between spiritual and mental fatigue. Sometimes we can take a whole week's vacation. You know, so I just need a day off. If I could just get a day off. So we take the day off and we go back to work the next day and we're tireder than we were when we took the day off. Apparently that hasn't happened to you. I, listen, it's happened to me. I, I just need a vacation. If I could just get a vacation and get out of town. I've gotten a vacation, got out of town, came back, and I was tired of it when I went. Has that happened to anybody besides me? 
Yeah, okay. So what I, and it wasn't that the vacation wasn't helpful. It's just that the vacation was not really the problem. Spiritual fatigue and physical fatigue and emotional fatigue can all look identical. They have the same symptom. You're tired. They all have the same symptom. So how can you tell the difference? You can tell the difference, especially what we want to deal with today is spiritual fatigue. And you can tell the difference in spiritual fatigue in whether or not you're neglecting the things in your life that keep spiritual fatigue from happening. Here in 1 Samuel chapter 30, it says, Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag, and burned it with fire. They took captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but they carried them away uh, they carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city and there it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. When David and the people who were with them lifted up their voices and wept, or then they did, lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Down to verse 8. So David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered him, pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. So David went, he and the 600 men who were with him and came to the brook Bezor where those who, those stayed who were left behind. But David pursued he and 400 men for 200 stayed behind who were so weary that they could not cross the brook Besor. Go to with me to verse 17. Then David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. Not a man of them escaped except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. So David recovered all. Everybody say recovered all. David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away and David rescued his two wives and nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. Whatever the devil has stolen from you, it's our responsibility to take back and we've been equipped by God with his power, his anointing, the word of God, the power of God, the blood of Jesus, the word of God to recover what the devil has stolen from us. Amen. So if the devil has stolen from you financially, the devil has stolen your health from you. If the devil has stolen a relationship from you, if there is, if the devil has stolen from you, in fact, Proverbs says that anytime that a thief, or actually I think it's Deuteronomy that says anytime a thief steals something, he must restore back seven times what was stolen. So I always go back to the devil and tell him, you're going to have to repay me seven times what you stole me. I don't want you just to, to pay back what you stole, but I want seven times. The devil's so stupid. Sometimes he doesn't realize that what he steals from me is an investment for me. Had he not stolen it, I wouldn't get to just have what I had. He stole it. Awesome. Now you've got to repay seven times. I'm seven times healthier than I was before you attacked me. I'm seven times more prosperous than I was before you attacked me. My relationship with my wife is seven times stronger than it was before you attacked my relationship. And so, but we have to pursue, just like David had to pursue his wives and his children. All their stuff was stolen and David had to pursue it. It's like when the Israelites went into the promised land, even though the promised land was theirs, that's why it's called the promised land. It was promised them, but God told them every place that you place your foot belongs to you. So they had to go in, place their foot there. They had to actually go in and take it. That's what we need to do. We need to go in and take it. We need to pursue. Don't let life happen to you. You happen to life. But now here we see in verse 10, that David pursued and only 400 of the 600 men pursued because 200 of them were so tired they could not cross the brook Besor. Anybody know what a brook is? 
This is not a raging river. This is not even a pond. This is a brook. Now, one of my favorite sports is to fly fish. I love to fly fish. And I can tell you from fly fishing, there's a big difference between a fly, fishing a river, fishing a stream, and fishing a brook. Because a brook is only three or four yards, five yards wide, very small. And these guys were so tired, they couldn't even cross the brook to go pursue their stuff. And this is what the enemy wants to do for you. He wants to make you so tired, so worn out physically, emotionally, and spiritually that you just don't feel like pursuing what God has, pursuing what's been stolen. Anybody ever been there? Just me. I think some of you have been there. I think some of you have been that tired. I think what is maybe a little bit different for you is thinking about this whole idea of being spiritually tired. Because there's not a person in here that hasn't said at one time or another, I just need a vacation. And a person in here that hasn't said, I just need a day off. You might need a vacation and you might need a day off. But for those of us who are pursuing the things of God, for those of us who are taking back what the devil has stolen from us, it may not be a vacation we need. It may not even be a day off. It may be that we need to overcome the spiritual fatigue of being in battle and being in warfare with the enemy all the time. If you allow yourself to become spiritually tired, you won't be able to recover what the enemy has stolen from you. You won't even be able to cross the brook. Uh, you, you've, you've heard me say things like talking about speaking the word. It's amazing what will happen in your life when you set aside 20 minutes, a half hour a day, just to speak healing scriptures over your body, to speak financial scriptures over your financial situation. It's amazing what will happen in your marriage if you would just speak the word over your marriage. And yet it's amazing those of us who have heard these messages over and over and over, but we're so spiritually tired that we'll go through two or three weeks and not speak the word over our life. We made it to work. But we didn't take 20 minutes out that day just to speak the word over our lives and speak the scriptures over our life that pertain to the issue that we're dealing with. Am I just not talking to the right people? In Deuteronomy chapter 25, doing some Old Testament stuff here. The Amalekites are really the enemies of Israel. In Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 17, it says, Remember what Amalek did to you on the way as you were coming out of Egypt. Deuteronomy 25, 18. How Amalek met you on the way and attacked your rear ranks, all of the stragglers at your rear, when you were tired and weary, and they did not fear God. Take a deep breath, please. Don't be one of the stragglers at the rear. Proverbs says that it's possible to be sitting in the midst of the congregation and yet be backsliding. It's possible to be sitting under the word, listening to the word, singing the songs, hearing the worship, and at the same time, you're not pursuing God. But rather, we'd rather complain about the church rather than get in with both feet and pull with everybody else. We would rather just let life happen to us rather than pursuing, rather than staying hot for God, rather than staying on fire for God. Listen, staying on fire for God is not God's job in your life. It's your job in your life. God has given us the power of his word to speak, the power of his name on our lips to speak, the power of the Holy Spirit to fill us to overflowing so that we can be everything God's called us to be and do everything that God's called us to do. And we need to pursue the things of God. Don't be a straggler. You see what? It doesn't say that Amalek destroyed the whole army of Egypt it, or of uh, Israel. It says that Amalek, which is a, which represents those people or circumstances that wait to attack us when we're tired. And it says here that Amalek attacked the stragglers in the back. Don't be one. Stay with the pack. 
Stay with what's going on. Stay in the center of what God's doing in your life, in the word, in your church. Stay in the center and stay hot for God. Don't be one of the stragglers in the back because the stragglers in the back get picked off because they get emotionally and more importantly, uh, spiritually fatigued. Is this okay? In Judges chapter 15, verse 14, the book of Judges. If you're new to the Bible, we have a lot of people that are new to the Bible, a lot of new Christians here at Living Word. God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. We've given you a Bible. And if you'll go, I've, you know, I've been in Samuel and Deuteronomy and now we're in Judges. And I know finding your way around the Bible is a little bit challenging. If you'll go to the front to the table of contents and uh, in your Old Testament, it'll show you the page numbers that these books are on. And you can go to those pages and keep up with us. Go right to the table of contents and find these books with us. Right now we're in Judges chapter 15, verse 14. When Samson came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting against him. Then the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and the ropes that were on his arms became like flax that is burned with fire and his bonds broke loose from his hands. He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand and took it and killed a thousand men with it. Then Samson said, with the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, I have slain a thousand men. And so it was when he had finished speaking that he threw the jawbone from his hand and called that place Ramath Lehi. Then he became very thirsty. So he cried out to the Lord and said, you've given me this great deliverance by the hand of your servant. And now shall I die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? So God split the hollow place that is in Lehi and water came out and he drank and his spirit returned and he revived. You can wear yourself out even in victory. Here the Bible says that the Spirit of God came upon Samson and Samson experienced a great miraculous victory. Let me ask you a question. Anybody in here ever in your life experienced a great miraculous victory? Anybody? God's just done something fabulous, just something amazing in your health. God's done something amazing in your finances. God's done something amazing in your marriage. God's done something amazing in your business. I mean, you were standing and believing God. And, and you know, God, if you don't come through, we're not going to get through this. We're not going to make it. God, God, you got to come through. And then, and then something miraculous happens and you experience a great victory. It's at that time that we have the possibility, we have the potential of experiencing a great emotional and spiritual fatigue. It's what happened to Samson and God. Now watch this. God provided a way for Samson to revive himself. It doesn't say now stay with me here. This is important. It does not say that God revived him. It does say that, but God revived him by providing a way for him to drink, to be revived. Samson didn't just say, God, I'm, I'm weary and I'm thirsty and would you revive me? And all of a sudden, just like the bunny that I, the, that I talked about before, he just jumped up and he was revived. But rather, the Bible says God provided him a spring and he had to drink from this spring to be revived. So God wants to revive you spiritually. God wants to, to deliver you from this fatigue, the spiritual fatigue. Anytime there's spiritual fatigue, God, I'm so spiritually fatigued. God has provided a way out for you. Remember Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 says that God gives power to the weak. It says, in fact, Isaiah, let me read that to you really quickly. Isaiah chapter 40 Verse 28, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. God never gets tired. So whatever you're dealing with in your life, God never gets tired. He's always on it. But then I love verse 29. He gives power to the weak. Not only does God never get tired, but this, this abundance of energy that God has, this abundance of spiritual energy, this unlimited source of spiritual energy, the Bible says that God gives that to us. 
God empowers us with that. God gives power to the weak. Say, God gives gives. power to the weak. Then it also says that to those who have no might, he increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall fail, shall utterly fall, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. So you can be spiritually on top. If you need a vacation, take it. You need a day off, days off are good. Somebody asked me the other day how I did on the golf course. I said, any day on the golf course is a good day. (laughs) You need a day off, take it. Need a day at the lake, take it. Not Sunday, but if you need a day at the lake, take it. (laughs) Saturday's a good day at the lake. If you need a day off, take it. But don't mistake vacations and days off for the fact that we can get spiritually exhausted. And we just need to revive ourselves spiritually. I want you to mark Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 in your Bible. Matthew, turn with me. Everyone turn with me to Matthew. The book of Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28. No, no, no. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Matthew, I just wanted to be sure you were awake. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. I don't give recognition often enough to those who who do so much behind the scenes work. I'm so grateful to our sound people, to our lighting people, to our uh, to our graphics people, our creative people. I just want to say the scriptures that are in the little boxes behind me. We had some real major challenges uh, and. I didn't get those to the, to the right people. I didn't even think they were going to. I turned around and saw those up there, and I was shocked. I don't know who, do, who does that, but whoever does that, thank you. Because you, uh, those weren't even supposed to be there. I didn't even have those to you in time for you to get them up there. So whoever you are, you rock. <laughs> Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who work hard and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Stop saying it. Stop it. Stop saying it's so hard. The Christian life is so hard. I heard heard a preacher on the radio the other day talking about, you know, you're going to make it through somehow. The Christian life is so hard. Apparently, this guy's been, been in church his whole life. I used to serve the devil. Anybody in here ever served the devil? I used to serve the devil. Just me? Y'all were born with a, with a Bible in your mouth. I used to serve the devil. That's hard. Serving the devil is hard. I'm not saying that, that being a Christian and walking with God doesn't have its challenges. Of course it does. I'm not saying that we don't have to, we don't, that, it's not, that there's not spiritual warfare and we have to stand in God and believe God for things. Absolutely we do. But I want to tell you something. I used to serve the devil. And, I, and compared to serving the devil, the Christian life is awesome. Man, when you're serving, that's hard, that's awful, that's tiring, that's, I mean, that's, yeah, I hear people talking about, oh, the Christian life is so hard, and I'm thinking, well, you, you know what, you just need to take a six-month from vacation from Christianity to go serve the devil for a while. That was awful, wasn't it, to say that. But I'm serious, sometimes I think, you don't really need to do that, but sometimes I think, that it's like, what planet are you on? I used to serve the devil, that's hard. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Well, my life sure doesn't seem to be real easy right now, Pastor Steve, compared to serving the devil. Okay, I'll move on, y'all are. Jesus said, come to me, all you who work hard and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Doesn't say take a vacation, all you who work hard, get, take a day off, go golfing, all you go, go boating, all you who, I mean, all that's great. I've already clarified that. But Jesus said, if you come to me, I'll give you a rest that you can't get anywhere else. Come to me, all you who work, how many of you work hard? Jesus said, come to me, all you who work hard 
All you who carry heavy burdens, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. I'm meek and lowly in heart. And you will find rest, rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You need to know that scripture. And anytime you start feeling like it's hard, it's hard. Christian life is hard. Walking with God is hard. Trying to get victory is hard. You just remember two things. Number one, you you remember Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29, what Jesus said. And second of all, you just remember when you used to serve the devil. That'll perk you right up. That perks me right up. Anytime I feel like it's hard, I remember. I'm not going to bore you with it, but I remember what it was like before I knew Jesus. That's a horrible way to live. So let's talk about how to experience the rest of God. Hebrews chapter 4, please. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 4. How to experience the rest of God. I'm going to continue this message next week. I don't have enough time this morning to finish everything I have on the rest of God. i got a lot of stuff here. But I want to start this out by talking about Hebrews chapter 4. Have you found it yet? Hebrews chapter 4. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering into his rest, let us fear or have a sense of awe, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. This says that there's a promise. What did I just read you in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28? Jesus said, Come to me, all you who work hard and carry heavy burdens, and I might give you rest. I could give you rest. Some people experience rest. You might get rest. You might not. No, Jesus said, if you come to me, all you who carry or work hard and carry heavy burdens, I will. How many know when Jesus says, I will, he will. I will give you rest. We got to come to him. He said he would give us rest. So I want you to see that this is rest is in the plan of God for you. Spiritual rest is in the plan of God for you. A vacation is in the plan of the company that you work for. Days off are in the plan of the company that you work for. So take them. But there are spiritual vacations and spiritual days off that God has promised you in his word. Jesus said, if you come to me, I will. Everybody say, I will. I will. will. How many of you are people of your word? Rest of you will pray for you. I see a lot of hands not going up. Maybe this is the wrong message. How many of you are people of your word? When you look at somebody and say, I will, you will. Jesus said, you come to me, all you who work hard, carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. So I want you to see that rest, spiritual rest, is in your future. It should be in your present. If it's not in your present, it will certainly be in your present. And then I want you to see in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9, It says, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God. There's a rest for the people of God. We don't have to go through life just worn out, exhausted. Because that's where the enemy wants you to live. That's what we all know what it's like to wow, that was a that was a really hectic week. Wow, we had a lot to do. I know what it's like to have, even spiritually, I know what it's like to have a lot to deal with. So you're going, boy, I'm tired. I know what that's like. But don't allow yourself to become one of the stragglers. That you're constantly tired. You're always tired. You're always spiritually tired. You're always spiritually behind everybody else. You're always spiritually behind where the army is going. But you're tired. You're so tired you can't even cross the brook. To go after what God has for you. Don't allow yourself to be one of those people. But you, first of all, the thing I want to leave you with today is that God has rest for you. Next week and next Sunday's message, I'm going to talk with you about what the Bible says about how to experience the rest of God. How do you experience that rest? The first thing. I want you to, I want to leave it. You're just going to leave us here hanging? No, I'm going to leave you with one thing. I want to leave you with one thing. I want to leave you with a holy dissatisfaction at being spiritually fatigued. 
Some of you have been so tired for so long that you think that's how life is. I'm just, I'm just tired. I'm tired all the time. How are you tired? But I want you to go through this. And next week, don't miss it. Next week's going to be a powerful word on how to experience the rest of God. But I want you to leave here today with one thing. And I want you to experience for the whole, it for the whole week. I want you to have a holy, H-O-L-Y, holy dissatisfaction with being spiritually tired. And I want you to, con I want this, to, I want everybody to stand up with me right now. I want this to be your confession. I want Matthew chapter 11, verses 28, 29, and 30 to be your confession this week. Did you mark that in your Bible? I want all of you to mark that in your Bible. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, 29, and 30. And I want that to be your confession this week over your life. When you come back, you're going to be so ready. I want you to come back ready. I want you to come back hungry. I want you to come back like the horse at the gate that's ready to go. I want everybody to say this. I come to Jesus. I work hard. I carry burdens. But I come to Jesus. And Jesus gives me rest. I take his yoke upon me. And I learn from him. He is gentle and lowly in heart. And I will find rest for my soul. For his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. See, when we're talking about, I, you know, I'm carrying heavy burdens. I want you to understand that you can exchange those burdens for his burden. I don't want you, God doesn't want you carrying a lot of heavy stuff through life. He wants you to give that to Him. He wants you to roll your cares on Him because He cares for you. And He wants you to carry His easy yoke. So will you speak this over your life this week? Two people will, the rest of you? I'm not doing it, Pastor Steve. Will you, will you speak this over your life this week? Yes, good, good. I want to see you in a state of rest all the time. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I know you got a lot going on in your life. Yeah, I do. But I'm still good. I'm, I, you know what? When you're rested, you can deal with a lot. When you're exhausted, just the least little, just crossing the brook will wear you out. So I want you to be spiritually rested. Say this again after me. I come to Jesus. Those of us who work hard. Even those of us who are carrying heavy burdens. And Jesus gives me rest. I take his yoke upon me. And I learn from him. He is gentle, lowly in heart. And I find rest for my soul. For his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. Do you know where that is? I want you to speak that over your life. I don't want you to just do it here in church to make me happy. I want you to do this three times a day this week. And I want you to come back hungry and ready to attack the word.